Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And I'm happy to be here again after last week's lecture. And hopefully today we will be able to have a better and clear idea how to evaluate and optimize SVRT and SRS plants and what it goes beyond behind the scenes, basically, of the, of the plants. When you see beautiful plants on the paper, there is a lot going on that has been done before. But normally they are beautiful, so you can, you can make it like that. So no conflicts to declare. So just I'm just going to spend a few, few minutes at the beginning just to make sure that we have, that we're aware and about very important concepts on planning SVRT and, and SRS, things that you need to think and you need to have present all the time. Whatever site are you, you're planning, brain, lungs, whatever it is, make sure that you know that we're, we're dealing here with very large, large dose per fraction and few fractions. Remember that the targets and margins are very small, between zero to five millimeter. We talk about the use of flattening filter free beams to take advantage of the higher dose rate and basically that decrease the treatment time. Also remember that we talk about the concept of the sharp dove fall off outside the PTV. That's a very, very important concept for SRS, especially and SVRT, of course. And also that we, 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 because we're dealing sometimes with very small lesions and very small targets, so there is a big, big dosimetry work that you need to do for small fields and make sure your machines are ready for that. Normally, the plants are prescribed to lower isodoses to take advantage of the penumbra to 80%, 90%. The, the dose inside the PTV, we said that it's inhomogeneous because we're dealing with sharp fall off on the edges, basically. So of course, inside is going to be hotter than the plants that you normally do for conventional fractionation, which the hotspots are no more than one ten percent. Here we're talking about one twenty five percent and beyond, which is okay because it's inside the PTVs, inside the GTVs in general. But make sure that that's a concept that when you do this plant, make sure because especially for lung that that is inside the PTV because sometimes it falls because you're you're constraining so much certain things that you know the treatment plan assistant they need to put those somewhere and it goes to places that we don't want to or not near our important ours. So there is a very good report for the APM, the, the, the TG101, and it's listed on the reference at the end of the presentation. So remember, we, this is a, a, a picture that I have from the previous talk that if the bean margin is, is much less than the penumbra, of course, we talk about this going to be an homogeneous PTV dose, the maximum dose is going to be 125 and more, and we're going to have a dose fall off. And also, just to give you an idea why we prescribe two doses lower, like 80%, is because if you see here, for a single isocenter dose distribution, this is just a, a graph, the dose follows from the prescription dose, let's say if we prescribe on the right, if we prescribe to 80%, this point here, and it, it typically occurs over the shorter distance in the dose prescribed half of that was like 40%. So the distance that we're dealing now is 3.8 millimeters against, let's say, if you're prescribing to 95%, which is normal plan. So the basically the, the ratio between the, the prescription dose and the 50% as a dose for that distance is going to be 5.7 millimeters. So it's more. So you that's what we use to prescribe to lower as a dose because we take advantage of the rapid fall off of the curves. In terms of evaluation criteria, there is a lot of there is a lot of documents there, especially protocols for like the the normal tissue constraints and also for the, the targets area. So for conventional fractionation, there is this, the famous Quantec. It's a series of papers, basically, and publications, which gives you the, the normal tissue complications probability models in the clinic. And you will have a lot of suggestions for the, the, the dose criteria that we use for uh, targets and also for organs at risk. To translate to PRT and SRS, the same group, more or less the same group of people, work in the high-tech 
uh, basically. It's basically the equivalent of the Quantec, but for high dose per fraction cases. And this is a group that we've been working for many years, but finally last year in 2021, they published all the, basically it's a collection of paper of published data, basically, that they put it all together in one uh, issue on the Red Journal, the International Ro uh, Journal of Radiation Oncology, Biology and Physics. If the volume 110, issue one, you have all this collection of paper. And also there is a, basically a summary. There is the, the very first one is a summary of the NTCP estimates after SVRT and SRS treatment and the TCP estimate for the high-tech report. So basically these, I'm not saying that this is the most important article there, but in this article, in the summary, you will find these tables. I know they're super busy. There is a lot of information here, but basically you can see how here is, for example, for if you take the, the carotid artery, it says for, it gives you some dose constraints that uh, for some particular fractionation. For example, for five fractions, it gives you that the D max needs to be between 20 and 30, right? just to give you an example. But as you can see, there is for, for all the most important organs at risk, like lung, lungs, brain, liver, adrenal glands. And, uh, and this is for the, uh, actually, sorry, this is for the targets. Yeah. For each, so let's go back a little bit. This is for each particular site and is for the target coverage, the target, the, NTC, the NTCPs. And then if you go to the next table, this is going to be the TCPs, for example, for the particular, for the, for the specific ORs. Okay. So again, like I said, it's going to be very busy, but it gives you very good information of some statistics that you can use. Also, there is a lot of RTOG protocols that they are out there. And again, this is some of them that I wanted to point out, for example, for a spine and lung and liver. And these protocols, basically, they, they will specify some requirements for treatment planning in terms of the dose prescription, the target coverage, and the OR dose constraint. So you can use that and in your clinic, if you're studying an SVRT program or SRS, you need to be very careful which protocols you will see. But you will, you will follow, for example, not just thinking on the dose constraints only, but also see what is the techniques, the treatment planning techniques that they've been using, what is the immobilization devices and all that, because it's all related to that. Also, like institutions, they develop their own constraints based on published data, like local published data, or sometimes a collaboration with other institutions. But something very important and a message that I want to give here is that you don't you do not implement shared constraints without a clinical review and institutional approach. You need to be very careful. For example, I'm showing here what we MSK use for prostate cases going to 805. These are our constraints for the normal dish on the target criteria. But this comes from not just for the it's published data, but it's not just to give limits to these organs, but it has a lot to do how you simulate the patient, prepare the, the, the you know, if we put a spacer or not between the prostate and the rectum, the immobilization devices, the IGRT that you follow to basically to treat this patient. So all these constraints, we feel comfortable because all the studies we did and they might seem sometimes a little high for some institutions because they say, oh my God, you, why are you going, let's say, for the rectum to 41.2 uh, grade in this fractionation? It must be high. But actually, we, have, we do it because we have the rectum that we have that separation with the spacer. So there is a lot of studies in between. But my advice and something that you have need to be sure is that do not implement it until you review them, that they clinically makes sense in, in your place and your institution approve it as a whole thing, okay? So I'm in this, today I'm gonna be going through a lot of uh, these constraints that I'm gonna share what we use, but again, make sure that you read that red note there, okay? So now, I mean, these are basic concepts and, and I'm sure you have done a lot of lectures already about symmetry, about simulation, and, and, and I think there's some coming for treatment delivery. So now we're gonna concentrate on the planning 
particular, and I, I put a little more about beam selections, and also we're going to go through optimization and plan evaluation, which is the main concept of this, the main objective of this lecture. And we're going to, I, I design it per site because actually sometimes it makes a little different what site are you doing, even though like the planning is the concepts apply for everything, the concept that we learned before, but some sites they are, you need to pay attention on some particular, particular things for each individual site. For example, we're, I'm going to start with brain SBRT and SRS because it's the most, let's say, picky. I mean, there is a lot of things going on for here because they are very small lesions. Sometimes you have multiple lesions that are in the brain. So there is a lot going on. We have a lot of ORs. And then we're going to move on to other, some other sites. So if we think about a brain, SVRT and SRS, we normally treat these metastatic brain lesions. They can be encapsulators. Remember, we talked a little before, we, uh, sometimes you don't even have a GTV. Sometimes the GTV is the same as the CTV and the margin between the PTV and CTV can go from zero to two millimeters. And they're very, most of the time, they're very small, spherical, well-defined targets. You can also treat benign tumors like acoustic neuromas and meningiomas. And the prescription doses, it depends, basically depending, again, this is something that we follow in our institution, depending on the sizes for SRS, the size of the tumor diameter is the dose that you can go. If it's, we always said, if it's less than two centimeter, we normally prescribe to between 21 to 24 gray in one fraction. Again, and then between 2.1 and 3 cm, we go a little lower, 16 to 18 gray. And if it's more than 3 cm up to 4 cm, we, we prescribe between 14 and 16 gray. Again, these guidelines might vary depending of the number of lesions sometimes that you have, how this is for individual lesion. If you have many together, then you need to think about different approaches. And sometimes, let's say, if you have a bunch of two centimeter lesions that they're all together, sometimes we just go with the hypofractionated 900 times three because to give 21 to all this lesion then you're going to create a lot of crosses and other problems so you need to for individual lesions you can do this or well separated lesions remember we talked about last time depending they can be separated by 2 cm if you think about it and we look at some isodoses i'll give you detail and for sbrt the fractionations that we normally use in is 900 times three or 600 times five. If there was extensive, for example, previous treatment on the brain already sometimes, or if the lesions are very big, sometimes we go to 600 times, sorry, I skipped this one. So one thing that you need to think on uh, brain SRS or SVRT is the small field challenge that we talked a little bit before that you need to make sure that you do a good dosimetry on a small fields to prepare your machines to, in order to have a good dosimetric results or analysis after that. It's, this is basically, this, the, the MLC leaves edges, basically, the edges of the fields is the effect of that, that, that effect that we talk about all the time, is much more significant when you're treating very small PTVs. And sometimes you need to open the MLC's aperture a little bigger because these, most of the time, these MLC aperture, they're just a little bigger than our detector size, our, you know, the detectors that we use for the symmetry. I mean, they, are, they have a size as small as they can be. They're some very small, but I mean, if you're treating a lesion that is like five millimeters, sometimes that's why you need to be careful of that small field challenge that you make sure that you took into account when you do your small field of symmetry. And the standard beam models, the general models that we have will fail for very small targets. So in here you have an example, like for example, there are multiple small lesions that we're treating with this bigger field, which is a V-man. And you can see how the apertures are very, very small for this field. Of course, this is going to be moving because it's a V-man, but and I have some little movies afterward when we see examples. Another thing that you need to be concerned of in terms of beam arrangement for S SRS and SVRT for brain is the planning limitations that we have. So for example, if you're using a static fields, you know that the calculated versus the delivered dose is going to be within 3%. That's what we normally standard with, that we know for static fields, stat static IMR fields, okay? And then for VMAT fields, these, the regular dose calculation models in general are designed to give good results for a standard size for 
PTV is normal size. So that you need to make sure that you do that you elaborate new models to better calculate the dose for a, a small lesions. So the new models, for example, you need to also know which, which type of MLC you have. Like, for example, the one that I was showing in the picture before is the one with high definition MLC, which the center leaves are 2.5 millimeter. The width is 2.5 millimeters. So the models, most of the time, they're going to fit those 2.5 millimeter leaps. Of course, if you have a LINAC with the Millennium, let's say, 120 MLC leaps, which the center leaps are 5 millimeters, of course, that model is going to be fine. But there is a limitation. Okay, they're not going to fit less than 2.5 millimeters. So you need to be careful with that. And because of that, because the models that we feed for those small leaves, so we really want to use those small leaves to treat all the lesions. Sometimes if we're treating like, I don't know, 10 lesions, you might need to put more isocenters in order to all only use the center leaves. So you might need to separate the regions and do two isocenters for a, a subset of lesion. Now that's, that's, so you use those center leaves because we normally make the models to feed on that uh, group of leaves. So like this grouping these lesions in different plants, of course, it will inc increase your plant complexity. You require more treatment plan, treatment time, and, and planning time. So things that you need to, you know, think about. We actually, we have developed, and this is something just a comment, you can also automate that. So we have developed this little script that we have that it chooses the geometry. I mean, you... I mean, there is a lot of things you need to do, but you give the, you, you run that script and depending the lesion, it gives you an idea. Okay, you need to choose these two isocenter with this beam selection. If that's an idea. Then you tweak it. So there are certain things that you can automate a little bit instead of thinking all the time. Okay, so those are projects basically that you can have for the future. The normal beam arrangement that, or the, the standard beam arrangement, arc arrangement that we have for SRS cases and SVRT in the brain, normally we use these four uh, arcs. And as you can see there, there is one coplanar arc, which is with couch zero. And normally, sometimes it's a full arc, depending where you are, if you're in the area of the arc eyes or the lower part so maybe you do just partial arc but if it's on the frontal area of the of the range sometimes you do just a full arc and then three more partial arc with couch rotation and basically you want to spread as much here see you can see you have one beam with 90 degree couch one with 315 one with 45 so basically you're spreading everything on that but of course this is again this is starting point and you need to customize your uh, depending of uh, the number of lesion, where the lesions, if they are on the left side, if they are on the right side, or if they are in the left and right, if they are in the middle, if they are in the superior part. So you need to customize, you may need to tweak the angles there, the couch angles and also the aperture of the arc. So one thing to, to think about is, for example, also how you select the collimator angle here. I didn't put any suggestion because that depends on the lesions you have. So, but this, definitely you might need to turn the collimator, give some angles, and we advise not to always use zero degrees. It's always nice to use like 30 and minus 30 or 330 or 90 and zeros, stuff like that. But for example, you need to make sure when you select the, the collimator that you review the beams and basically and choose the right angles that enables the leaf travel and that limit excess dose to the brain. For example, in the picture on the left, is a, you have the two lesions that in that particular view, you have the two lesions, they're very close. So the zero degree collimation makes more sense than the, the 90 degree, because if you can see here, there is, in order to treat these two lesions with a 90 degree, there's going to be leaves open a lot for a long more time in this area unnecessarily. Something that in this, uh, when you have the collimators on the left, this leaf was always almost close all the time. So there was no extra normal brain radiation there. I don't know if it's very visible, but here on the picture on the right is, I think you can take the idea that the leaves are in order, they're gonna be opening to treat both lesion while it moves. And it's always going, they're always going to be open here in the middle because 
the banks are this way, okay? So that's what something to take into account. So basically one important structure, and I, I'm not saying that it's the most important, the eyes and the lenses for brains are, you know, pretty important. You don't want to give doses. So we normally keep the doses to less than 200 centigrade maximum. I mean, if you can go lower for sure. So no, normally if you need to put full arcs and they go through a, the eyes, so you can use avoidance sectors. So basically you travel with the beam, then you avoid giving radiation and then continue again. So basically the least don't move there and the radiation is, that's called what is called avoidant extractor, or you can use skip art. So it basically treats up to here, you skip this art and then continue the treatment. So that's, again, those are little tips that you can use for beam arrangement. In terms of optimization, again, I'm focusing here on, we use Eclipse treatment planning system, but all the system that, you know, you can have different, of course, and they're all very good. I mean, I'm just going to explain the concept, not this is an example of what we choose for Eclipse, but the concept of what to do with, for example, with this, with the, the photon optimizers, you need to know your treatment planning system, how it works. Particular for Eclipse, for if we use the photon optimizer for VMAT, we normally use 1.25 millimeter structure resolution. So you need to use the smallest structure resolution that you have in your BO and your photon optimizer in your particular treatment planning system. And then these are particular things that we choose for Eclipse. Again, those, and the most important being those, the dose calculation resolution, also you want to make it high because that's basically give you, because you're using a very small structure resolution. So you may want to make sure that those calculation resolution is the highest that your treatment planning uh, system has. In terms of the, yeah. yes. sorry, questions, yes. settings that you just showed, are they usually recommended by the vendors or do you suggest? Uh, yes, that? uh, that's a good question. Normally the vendor will give you all these things that I'm telling you, starting points and everything, but in a very limited number of cases. Then, for example, these things, I mean, this one is vendor, but for example, when we talk about objective, we develop our own because we have done so many cases and then we, with experience, you need to make sure, okay, look, this one for sure is, is something that you need to do. But for example, for when we go to the objective, we may say, oh, the priority is that the vendor storm is always, let's say 150, but we found that for targets, 200 was better and 50% for the OR because that's what we normally have. So that, that's your trick, but they will always give you that, some, some starting point. Wonderful. Thank you. And yeah, yeah, if anybody has any questions, please make sure you ask your questions in the chat and we'll make sure as we're going along the way, we'll address all the questions that you have. Thank you so much. Perfect. So this is the other part of the objectives that you're going to, again, this is the question that you asked before is excellent because that gave me something to give you here. So this is, normally you can create templates. And for example, here I'm, I'm giving you a template for a particular, you know, example of the brain case, but you need to tweak the stuff depending on the doses that the prescription dose that you want and the uh, the target that you want, the, 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 the basically the endpoint that you want for the plan. So this one is all for just the, the, the normal structure for brains. And you can see how, I just want to show you how we normally attack this problem, not, don't concentrate much in the numbers, but more on the type of objectives that we put. For example, for the brain stand, that is a structure that we normally have a maximum dose constraint, but also we have a D of five, and the dose of the 5% of the volume. So if we want to create, we, we, we put this line constraint that normally, if you can see here on the picture, you want to you wanna shave the curve of the brain stem because it's very important the dose per volume constraint. For a structure that you only have maximum doses, for example, the lenses and the acid, you just put an upper constraint. Basically, okay, it's an upper means, okay, I want the maximum dose with this one and that's it. I mean, that's a wish, of course. And the priorities, you work depending, this is something that, okay, like the vendor might suggest you, but for example, for prior, priorities in general, we normally use 200 to three, two to 250 per target. And then for the normal structure, we, we start with 50% of that. But if you pay attention here, see for the lenses and eyes, yeah, we use 
let's say if the target was 200, 50 will be for the for the eyes and the lenses, but for the brainstem, I'm using 50 because it's a different type of constraint that I put, a line constraint. And for the, for example, for brainstem upper, I put a little more because that's an important constraint there. I, that's especially, but then again, you need to see what your lesion, if the lesions are far away from the brainstem, then you might not need a very, very high IT or like very, very strict constraint. So basically this, you can create this template with experience. You create the templates and then you start with this and then you tweak it for your particular plan. So look, the dose volumes constraint for the P PTV, of course, because depending on the doses and the many PTVs that you might have for brain, that's, a, that's what it makes it difficult for brain SRS or SVRT because you can have more than one. So then you need to manually re-enter. That's what I didn't show you here. What are the objectives for the targets, only for the ORs. So, but I give you some suggestions here for the targets. The low objective is basically the lower constraints that we put in the in the in the optimization. So you normally want the dose ten percent higher of the prescription as with a priority between 100 and 120. And then for the upper objectives, basically we don't recommend. Why? Because remember that we it's not that we don't care. I don't want to say it, but we know that there's going to be a huge hotspot in the PTV, and that's good only for brain SRS and, and, and brain SPRT. That's good for that. That's why we don't recommend anything. Let the optimizer do whatever it is. And then if you see in the plan that it was really high because something was up, then you put a constraint. But as a starting point, it's better to do that, not to put that. And then and if you use NTO, which is NTO what it is, is the normal tissue objective. Basically, NTO takes care that most of the treatment planning system have this NTO function, is to take care of the things outside the PTVs. So you can either use that, or, you, or people use, and we use a lot, these rhyme structures that they are circles that you can, it's basically to shave the lower isodoses and the dose fall off after the PTV. But NTO, does, at least in Eclipse, does a very good job for brain uh, SRS and SBRT instead of using rhymes. But again, it's, you can use either. Or you can even, even use both, but you need to be very careful so they're not conflicting. So these are the starting parameters, again, that. This is actually something that the vendor gave us something, but they would never recommend you like specifically. This is with experience. So we found out, like for example, like the end, the start dose goes between 95 to 100, but the end dose is zero. And the distance from target to border see here after the priority is zero. Why? Because we want to use, we want us after the target, that's it. I don't want anything. So kind of. This is more or less what is done. That's what you will see when we go to lungs or prostate. It's different. You want to leave a margin because physically it's not going to be possible. Here, yes, we want, and because we, we allow very steep dose follows and also very high maximum doses to the PTVs. And I, like I said before, if you use the rhymes, you can use NTO, but if you reuse the rhyme, this is the rhymes that we normally use here. We use three. We use, see, the PTVs is... In red, here there are two PTVs in red and it's in yellow, but yellow is the next, is the rind, the first rind. But I, I, I could only highlight one <laughs> in the training planning system. So the PTVs are the smaller, leash, the, the thing in the middle. And then the first is, it will be this yellow. Then you have an, another small rind, which is the magenta. And another rind, which is the bigger one, the 1CM, is the, out, the outer one. So here I give you some of the doses. Again, these are starting points that we do. Like, for example, for the, very, the rind very close to the PTV, we prescribe 98% of the dose with a priority of 100 the next one, right, which is normally five millimeters away from the other one, 50% of the dose, because remember, I think we talked last time, we normally for SRS plants, we want the 50% isodose line be like between five millimeters to one cm beyond the PTV. So this is the way that you will be constraining that. And then for the outer, you, give, you can put 40%, but you can put even less, depending on, how, again, depending how many lesions and all that. The, so a lot of people, yeah? 
Sorry. So Hoi is asking a question in the chat, if you don't mind. So Hoi is asking, my center is starting SRS on SBRT from scratch. We still do not have any experience. And how do we move on with basic constraints or how do we move forward with basic constraints? And yeah. she's asking for some rule of thumb strategies. Basically, what you need to do is basically when you when you have when you don't have basic constraints, but I'm sure you will start with reading you you will basically adopt like a protocol for example if you go okay let's let's pick this protocol let's say for lang if you're going to do it let's pretty and let's see what are the constraints for there or you might use the high tech publications that they are very very comprehensive so when you have and you decide what those if those constraints are going to make sense in your clinic because of your previous experience that you already have for example if you're prostate conventional you know what the toxicity is in your center when you go to the rectum to i don't know 75 grade maximum so you kind of have to work the equivalent those the bds and all that that's what is very important to read that high text because that's explained very well how to do it and then you will find out it those that is reasonably equivalent to the conventional and that's how you will define your your basic constraint that's my advice and then when you define the basic constraint then you move to the planning because it's okay now let's think how we're going to achieve that what type of fields i'm going to use what kind of technique i'm going to use vmat arcs not arcs uh, whatever it is and then is then you start working on the on the machines to make them ready and also on your planning techniques thank you very much okay so another another thing that some people use, some, for example, instead of using Rhymes, instead of using NTO or with those two, some people said, okay, let me create a structure which is the whole brain with not PTV. So take out of the PTV and then I use that structure to give less dose. As you can see here, you can do that and see here we have a very specific 1% of the structure to receive one six of the prescription though with a high priority but as you can see if you have many lesions that is not going to work very well if you have one it might be because now you're taking it's a huge structure which is and then you might not be able to shave the isodoses very well around because this is you're giving a whole thing the same dose and you might be struggling basically the treatment planning system to achieve so again people use it but if you use it use it with caution and but sometimes you can use it with the others with rhymes for example and then making the ptv not ptv and take out the rhymes so basically the rhymes you control the smaller isodoses or the closest and then the rest you control with that structure so basically the advance the, the advice here is no matter which metal you, you use, MTO, RINES, brain or PTV. So the priorities of the dose gradient control structure must be two to two point seven times higher than the priority of the PTV lower objectives to get the sharpest gradient outside the lesion. That's a very important concept because if you make it very the same, is the treatment planning system is gonna say, oh. He, the, the PTV coverage here is more important. So I don't, I'm not going to care much about the outside. We need to tell them, no, you, the, the outside is really important. That's what the priorities are between double or 2.5 even times higher than the priority of the PTV lowers. Okay. Again, these are tips and tricks, but you need to practice and you need to see what's going on. Okay. Also, like we talk about these avoidance structures, which is basically you select this avoidance structure inside the, the, the PO, and the MNC will be used to block that structure. So basically, that's what it does. You tell, okay, I want to avoid the eyes. So the MLCs, as soon as they come through the eyes, they're going to block it. And then they're going to keep going, and then they're going to start open, and then they are right. So that's how the avoidance. And again, that's if your planning system have that option, which most of the modern and they do. Also, like if you don't have that, most of these basically you, you try to avoid the entry or exit is an option. Instead of, for example, to make a full arc, you can make a half arc on this side until the eye, and then you do another one until this eye. And then, okay, yeah, you lose treating in between, but it's not a big deal if you don't have that option. So there are, there are many options to do that. Dr. Delba, um, yeah. sorry. One more question. Qatar is asking, the rings of two targets are not supposed to intersect. Is that correct? 
the sorry and the rings or rings i believe you call ah, the them rings that. yes yes actually yeah that's a good see for example here these two targets are separated enough that the ring didn't intersect but for example if they were much closer then you need to reshape the rings you you cannot overlap them because then if you let's say imagine if the the two lesions have, they have different prescription dose you need to put different prescriptions to the ring the rings there so if you're overlapping it's going to be conflicting so you need to make sure that you check everything on the rings yes that's a good question and a good comment basically so basically another thing that you need to pay attention when you're optimizing and that happened i think for everything at least in our treatment planning system that the dose that you see here in the this is the optimization window window that you see an actual dose always know that for the final PTV cover is typically higher than what this tells you. So normally when you're optimizing, I mean, yes, you want to see my, my constraint is 29 and the actual says 27, 29. But then when you exit optimization and you use the real dose calculation, it's not going to be 27. Most probably it's going to be 28. 28 something so that's a concept that you need to think because when you're optimizing and let's say you were up and you reach 29 was my maximum and it was 28 90 you know that it's going to be more than 29 and then you have to go back and reduce it so if you know that in advance so you can always and that normally happens almost all the time and that's also for any trip you know that because then this is the optimization calculation. Then you do the dose calculation after that, which the, the you know the algorithms you know they they take into account scatter and other things that they're not taking care. Some of them they are taking care of the POs, but not everything. So it, it, you make sure that you know that again. Those are little tricks here. But again, you don't want to make it super low because then it's going to be too low. So you want to make it lower, but not too low. Something else for brain that is very important too is the, the fact that uh, if you prescribe, let's say, SRSV mat to 100%, basically the normalization will start with 100% that covers 99% 90, of the volume. So make sure that the plan normalization values in percentage should be within 5%. So if you do the plan that you are going to choose then to normalize or renormalize to 100% or in between, make sure that you don't go beyond 5% plus or minus, that your renormalization is like less than 95% or more than one of five. That means if you need to do that to get the coverage that you want, you need to go back to your optimization and maybe make it more, the dose fall off needs to be a little more tighter. Okay. Then basically also you need to review the DVA in optimization and also like most of the treatment planning you have you have a dvh while you're running the optimization but remember that is not the, the final so when you do the final review make sure that you review that and you review it if you have multiple ptvs for each individual ptv so you don't you don't create a ptv with the sum of all ptvs because one might be better covered than other one and then in the overall it's going to say oh it's great cover but one it wasn't covered that well so you need to review everyone and basically you have to basically to obtain adequate ptv coverage you need to adjust the lower and upper dose constraint during optimization and the main goal is to make sure that the PTVs of the, that they have the similar prescription have similar D99s, and no, you don't have a significant spread. For example, here on the on the picture on the right, there is a case that there were two PTV that they were separated by three grades, which is okay, but you want them more. See on like the picture on the top where you have the 18 grade PTVs; they are all kind of together. The, like the D99 and the 2100, they're kind of all together. You don't want them to be the same dose to separate it. Okay. And you can see here how the dose different between 18 and 21 is three, is three grades. So that's what you see there. So that's actually nice. Okay. So again, things to pay attention. That's what is very important to when you're optimizing, yeah, you put all the PTVs there and you optimize it. Don't create one PTV with all of them. Just do it individually and review them individually because they can be very different, especially when you have 
BTV that are really small and let's say five millimeter, and then you have ones that is like almost two centimeters. So you're gonna you you're gonna need to tweak the optimization for each. Okay. Again, some like we talked before, remember that we said that most of the algorithms you optimize and they're fit for the center leaves of your MLC carriages. In our case, we have a 2.5 millimeter, but also we also use the five millimeters too. So make sure that you use that because of that and because you might have multiple lesions spread from, I don't know, from the frontal part to the occipital to the cerebellar part so that they can be a bit different in order to treat everything instead of doing a huge fill and treat it with the outer leaves, the ones that they are more than 2.5 or 5 millimeter, then you what you can do is choose multiple isocenters. And then this is when the things becomes a little bit time consuming in the planning. But then when you get it, the, the hand of it is very, you know, it's very intuitive. And if you stick with the, the, all the tips that I give you before for each individual isocenter, you're going to be fine. Making sure, the only thing that you need to make sure that you avoid, you know, when you're using, you're planning one isocenter, when you do the other one, you avoid as much as possible with your fields especially to go through much through the other lesions. That's for like any planning that we do with other lesions around. So you try to avoid that with your isolation. If you cannot do it with the isolation, you definitely need to use those PTVs as avoidance structure or put very high constraint, meaning like, okay, I don't want more than one gray or 170 gray for this because this is being treated by another isocenter. But that's what we said here. You, you need to constrain it very, very low. But of course, when you, you review the plans individually, the two isocenter, but then when then you create a plan sum with all the, and make sure because there's going to be contributions, of course, from one plan to another. So you make sure that everything is okay. And each PTV and all the ORs when in the in the composite plan, basically, with all your isocenters. But that's when it gets a little more complicated and tricky. But it is not bad. Dr. Jal Valencia, Isam, Isam from Morocco is asking, what about normalization? 100% covers 50% of the target in terms of conformity and homogeneity. Yes, actually, I'm going to go, if you, if you, I'm going to talk about conformity index and in very soon, if you give me awesome. the... Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And Iqbal is also, uh, there's one more question. Paul is asking, in which scenario we use one plan as a base plan for another one you can use that i mean if your treatment planning system have that option we found we do have it but we found that it, it gets more complicated when you use a base plan and then you do the other one so what we do most of the time we we optimize each isocenter rate but we keep evaluating the plan sum at the same time you know, we, it's few interactions that we do because we found that you control better, especially the OR doses and the, the contribution to the, the PTVs that they are not in one isocenter from the other plan. You control it better by just not using base plan options, just doing plans, individual plan. But again, this is something that you need to, that you might need to, you know, try and see what, what you feel more comfortable with. So for plan evaluation, if we continue a little more, so these are the guidelines that we use for PTV coverage. So for each PTV, so we have at the maximum, remember we said between 125 and we go even up to 150% of the prescription. The minimum dose, we want to be more than 90% of the prescription and the PTV, the volume of the prescription dose should be more than 98%. As you can see, the covers were asking for really nice coverage here. And most of the time you can get it because we're allowing the hotspot to be very high. For example, in the picture on the right, you can see how the the 100%, the, the which is the green line, covers very well the target, which is the, the thicker red line there. And then the 50% isodose land, remember, that's the isodose land that we are watching to be very, very conformal to the target, because that is going to tell us how much of the dose fall off we took advantage of. And because we wanted, you know, you want to give 
the less dose possible to the normal brain as possible. Remember, we're, we're treating very high dose, 50% of a very high dose here is a lot of those. So you want to make sure that that's very, very small. As you can see here, the typical dose follows for the 50% is between three, four, five, three to four millimeters from the 100 to the 50 for a true bean high definition with the 2.5 millimeter sleeve. And it can be between four to five millimeter for an M120, which is the one that has the five millimeters lead. So that's something that you need to think about it. Like for example, in the, in the example on the right, these are targets done with the high definition. So you can see the distance between the 100% isodose to the 50% isodose most of the time is three millimeter. Of course, especially for the lesion on the bottom, but the lesion on the top, see, you can see in this area on the, on the inferior that is it's probably more than three millimeter, more, it's more like five millimeter. And that's because there might be another lesion very close to there, which is contributing. And that you need to think about it, but you don't want that 50% to cover everything. You know, you need to tie it between, I will say five millimeters or less. And they have normally, especially in the picture on the bottom, the 50% should have similar shape of the PTB. Again, that's for a very isolated lesion. Normally, you're going to get a 50% isodote, like the same shape of the target, very circular. If there are multiple lesions and they're the closer they're together, you're going to start seeing what's happening here on the picture on the top, that the 50% will be a little more oblong not a perfect circle, perfect shape as the isodose, as the PTV. Okay, and now to answer the question about the conformality, the, pre the prescription, we're gonna, with that, we're gonna talk about two concepts for brain, the gradient index and the conformity index. The gradient index basically is measures the dose fall off from the prescription to the 50% isodose line. So, which is normally what, remember, we said, okay, we want them between three to five millimeters, that isodose, but to get a better number, a better estimation. So what we do, we create this GI structure, which is a CM circle, uh, it's the PTB plus one CM, which is the magenta here. And then see, you, you see here, the 100% isodose line is green, the 50% isodose line is blue, and then you have the PTB in red. And that you basically we use this basically the, the definition of the GI is the volume of the GI structure of that the volume of the 50% isodose line divided by the volume of GI structure covered by the 100% isodose line. So you can do that calculation, or basically we have created Actually, again, these are formulas that you shouldn't you shouldn't use without following your experience. We have this predictive. We have from many cases that we have done. We have run this formula. We found this formula, for example, for a predicted GI. So, what you should expect, for example, with a planner start planning a case. Okay, for this lesion that I have the volume of the PTV, my predicted GI should be four divided the PTV to the 0.2 exponential for PTV with the, with the volume of 0.2 cc. If the PTV is less than 0.2 cc, this is the formula. And this is for high definitions machine. For regular M120 or five millimeter lips in the center, this is the formula. Again, this gives you an indication, for example, if you run that formula and your GI is a lot more higher than that, it means that you're not doing a very good job in the planet, you, you can you can constrain more, you can get it better. And if it's too low, I mean, it's meaning that you're, you're constraining too much. The 50% is too close to the target and probably your hotspot is like super high. So that's what you have this prediction. So if the plan GI is 10% higher than the predicted, you need to find out why it's causing that. Maybe I'm not constraining very well, or sometimes this can happen. The PTV is close to nearby lesions. Sometimes there is no way the lesions are too close that the 50%, the, the GIs, you need also, they cannot overlap. You need to shape them, but the, the volume gets reduced. So the GIs, the predicted are gonna be higher than if the lesions were like separated. So you accept that. Or sometimes you don't have the optimal algeometry. So you need to go back and review your collimator angle. Maybe you need to put more arcs or there is not, the optimization is not optimal. Just go and review your 
dose gradient. And make sure that remember we said that the priority for the dose gradient is less than two times of the lower. It's actually more than two times of the lower isodosis lesion. So you need to make sure to see what's going on. And again, remember this gradient index is going to give you how, let's say, it's going to give you how good the 50% is compared to the 100%, because that's what we care. And then the conformity index, that is something that we use for many plants, is the volume of that GI is tried to get in 100% divided by the volume of the PTV. So basically what it's telling you, it's gonna give you how basically conformal, how that 100% isodose is conformal depending of the target of the volume of your target. Normally, the guidelines that we have for CIs are less, you know, normally we, we like to be less than 1.2 for VMAT planning, but sometimes it can be closer to 1.5 for very, very small lesions because you know the that volume of the again is sometimes the hundred percent is a little bigger than your, you know, it will it will grow big. So basically it's like comparing the volume of that 100% on that structure divided the volume. So if it's too high, meaning that the 100% is too generous, let's say. But you don't want it, of course, you don't want it less than, yeah, I should have put not less than one because that means that the coverage is not good. So it's always one or more, but no more than 1.2. So also like something very important, I'm sorry that I'm taking too much time on brain because as you can see, there is a lot of things that you need to think here. The other ones, you will see how quick we will go. And I will go quick because the time is almost running. <laughs> Something that you need to think here is just make sure that you check the movement of the leaves. See, I'm going to run this little movie. You can see how the how it runs and see most of the leaves, when they are not being used, they are parked outside the jaws, which is a nice feature. I'm going to run it again so you can basically see it again. See how they, they are used leaves, they, they park already here, which is very good, okay? So, but review this, review how the, the leaf motions are going, you know, for your, for your targets. Dr. De La Biancia, Bilal yeah. is um, asking for clarification on VGI 50% of prescription. Was, I believe that was in your previous slide. This one. Yes. Is the vol yes, like what I put here, GI, is just to make sure is that you're using the is the volume of the GI structure basically covered by the 50%. Basically, that you use the, the DVH, you said, okay, the volume of the 50% 50, 50 of the, let's say the prescription was 2100, 50% is 1050. So you want to see what is the volume of the GI structure getting that dose. And then you divide it by the volume getting the prescription dose on that GI structure. That's how we, we found that, how to evaluate the gradient index, basically. That's what GI in parentheses mean is we're talking about the GI structure, the volume of the GI structure, getting 50% of the prescription dose. Okay. Wonderful, thanks. Okay, so... Also, like evaluate the jaw setting because the triple I mo triple A model, which is those algorithms that is used for many many uh, treatment planning systems, are based on MLC opening and know the jaws. So in general, for VMAT plan, we want the MLC to define the open aperture. See here, you can see on the picture on the right for VMAT, the jaw should be behind the edges. So the jaw, you make sure that the jaws are. Basically, and for all the movement of the leads, they are they are always outside, okay, of the because the, the MLCs are going to be the one defining the uh, the open aperture, not the jaws. For multiple case, for multiple lesion cases, basically you're going to have a complex MLC motion, like I showed you in the picture be before. So make sure that you check if there are leak the leaf gaps inside the jaws that do not move at all. So you want to make sure that then you may need to close the jaw there in order to cover that leaf gap because if it's right at the border and it's not moving at not moving at all, so you close the jaw a little bit to get rid of it. And also you check if there is any leaf gap inside the jaws that does not contribute to the PTV targeting, then you close the jaw to avoid unnecessary leakage. So that's what I, there is a lot of things. 
It's not only just the optimization and all that for the, the plan evaluation. This, uh, this is part of this plan evaluation for SRS. And again, it's very complex because you can, if it's one lesion or two lesions, it's very easy. But if you have 10 lesions or 12 lesions, the leaps are, you know, you're going to have arcs everywhere, lesions everywhere. You want to make sure that everything looks correct because you want to avoid problems then when you do the dosimetry. So here, for example, you, you want to make sure, see in the red circles, uh, evaluating the just setting, there is a, give, a, a leaf gap on this red circle in both the Y1 and Y2 that is, they both move only once and it's up and show in, at the end of it. So they see from here, it move here, and this one from here, it move here. So what you can do there, just close the jaws there in order to, because that's going to be leaking all the treatment is going to be in the same position and only at the end it moves like a little bit. So you make sure you close the jaw, that means they're going to be parked outside. The one in the in the yellow circle, that's a different story. Maybe it's a very small that is moving, but it's moving very close to the target. So you don't want to cover that because that leaf gut is contributing to the PTB dose. So that you leave it, okay? Even though it's a small, but it's contributing some dose to the, to the target. If we move to normal tissue criteria, like I said before, choose protocols, a high tech, I'm going to present here and I like the constraints that we use for a normal tissue for brain SRSs. And again, this is for our use. Do not attempt to use in your clinic if you're not ready. Evaluate what you have. This is what we normally follow for lenses less than one grade, the max and optic structure, we have a guideline of a gray or 12 if a limit, depending if it's too close to the target. So you can, I'm gonna, this, you're gonna be able to see it. You know, I'm gonna go quick. I'm gonna give you the presentation so you have everything. And then for, this is for SRS, single fraction. For SVRT, see here we have, for all the structure, we have those limit depending on the fractionation. If you do three fractions, four fractions or five fractions, depending on the fractionation that you do. And not for everything, for example, see for the optic nerve, we only have for five fractions because for three fractions, we scale down and that's it. So, and you can see that there is guidelines and there is limit. And then when you know the guideline, why we separated in that? Because the guideline, if you need to exceed the guideline, you need to consult with the physician and say, look, I'm, in order for me to give you a good plan, I need to exceed the guideline. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. But the limit is basically a hard stop. If you need to exceed the limit, you need to have a peer review, what we call. So you tell the physician, look, we're going to exceed the limit. For or You try not to, but if you have to, then they need to talk to other physicians and say, look, this is a special case. The tumor is very close to the optic nerve and the patient is blind. So there is might be, and so we're okay to exceed a little bit of the of the limit, but only in a peer review conversation. Then I have, I think I have some examples. See, this is a brain, a seven lesion brain case with there are two lesions, the, the two left cerebellars, because they are too close. The physician went to 900 times three and they are bigger lesions. And, the, and then you have five little lesions spreading on the, on, you know, in the frontal low, in the cerebellar, and the temporal, and those are going to 21 centigrade each. If we, like the beam arrangement that we use, like I told you before, normally you use the four arcs arrangement. See here, instead of using a, 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 a complete arc, a full arc with the zero couch, they were split it in two, one on the left, one on the right, and then only two non-coplanar because the, the one with 90 degree is going through too much brain unnecessarily because they're, they're very, they're in the cerebellar lesions. For the, this is for the two cerebellar lesions. Then I want to show you, I'm not going to run, I have the movies, I'm going to just run, see how the, this is one arc, the non-coplanar arc. I'm going to run this one. See, this is the coplanar. See, of course, you're exiting through the brain stem and core, which is in orange and little blue, but it's okay. Next student, uh, there yeah. is Tom from Morocco is asking in which situation you use multiple small fields without any leaf motions in each. So no ah. modulation. MLCs. No, uh, you when you have single lesions, yes, like for example, like arc uh, arc dynamic. That is a basically we call it, it's not volumetric. Uh, MLC, so the gantries not moving. So you, uh, 
the gantry is arc, but with MLCs around the, you know, modulate intensity as the VMAT. Yes, we do it, but you can use that for single lesions or maybe two lesions that they are overlapping that they create a, a bigger lesion. But also like something that taken in order to do that, the DCA with the dynamic conformity arc, you it's very important that the lesions are very spherical because when you when they're weird shapes, it's very hard <coughs> to make concave isodoses. It's much better to use VMAT because it's, then you need to create like a lot of different volume to trick basically how to how the lips because the lips are not, not going to be moving on around the PTV, not like creating intensity modulation. Okay, so Thank yes, you can use that. Thanks. For some reason, I'm okay. There you go. I couldn't mute one participant, but we're good. Okay. So, and here you have the dose distribution. You can see here how the 100% covers very nicely. See the 90%, which is the orange, because they're so close. Is that's going to happen? At least there. You know, if you can create a bridge there, that's better. But see the next isodons, which is the 70% is basically also like covering more and you can see the 50 percent here probably the gradient index is not going to be that great because the lesions are too close because look this is a lot more than five millimeter of course but that's normal these things that you know that's what these lesions were treated also this is not 2100 it's 900 times three so we're, we have a little more the the dose per fraction is much less then this is for the second lesion and then the, this is the dose, the DVH, but uh, in, the, in, the, in the table. So you can see how we met all the constraints for the structures. So they are green because we actually, this is a program that we run that is a template that we put and it compares to the constraint, which is the goal and the limits on the table that I showed you before. And if, the, if everything meets the goals, it's going to be green on the side. If, it's, if, it, if it exceeds the goal, but it's within the limit, it's going to be orange. And if it exceeds the limit, it's going to be red. So it's very visible. And so this is what we put in the plan report, for example. But again, you can use the ice. I didn't want to show the whole DVH here. But you can see how the coverage is very nice. And this is the five lesions SRS. Again, we use five arcs here. You can see there is only uh, one coplanar arc, which is a half arc, basically, on the left side. Most of the lesions were on the left side. And then you have three arcs, 90, 45, and 315. I think I have, yes, I have some of the movie. I'm not going to play them all, but you can see how, see how I'm covering all the little lesions. And of course, there is those exiting through the eyes, optic nerve, but then you put constraints on that. Let me do the last one. This is the coplanar field. See, you can see how you're going to exit through the eye, but I'm going to play it again. You can see how we started. See, we started and the eye was completely uh, covered. It was only exiting through the other eye, the, the left eye. So if we go to the next slice, you will see the cover. See here, you can see when SR, when the lesions are far away and they are small lesions, you can see, look how the 50% covers super well. See here, these are the two, this is the left temporal, the le one of the left cerebellars. You can see in the coronal sagittal how well the 100% is and the 50% is the coverage. And the five, these are the other three lesions that they were like a little more superior. This is the left frontal one and left front. These are very close to each other. They are overlapping even, but because the whole thing was less than one centimeter, you can treat it as the as one lesion basically in the same plan. And then this is the last, the last lesion of the five in the left frontal, which was very isolated, also very good coverage. And you can see the dose statistic that we met everything for these, the, all the PTVs constraint that, you know, remember we said minimum dose more than 90, maximum between 20, 125 and 150, it was 29.9. So it's all very good. Now we're gonna go to land. I know we are, how, I mean, how are we doing with time? I can go very quickly through, because again, the, the brain, I wanted to take the time because there was a lot going on and we explained a lot of concepts that you can apply for all of these. Then I can go maybe here, there is more information. I can go to the specifics of each. I have lung, prostate and paraspinal, okay? Is that okay? It's fine by me. I think, yeah, this is very informative and I'm sure everybody's benefiting a Again, lot. Again, you're going to have this information, but it's just to make sure that I, you know, 
we yeah. can. Soho is asking that we are all fine too. So I think we're everybody... fine. Please go on. Okay. So I promise to do it quick, but I don't want to not rushing because I want to the most specific one. So for Lance, there is a um, lot of information here. Before yes. we move forward, sorry, one yeah. quick question. Islam is asking, is the hyper arc technique, does that mean that the use of non copalinar arcs or what uh, are the hyper, other? Yes, yes. Hyper arc is actually is non copalinar. It's basically, you can use eco planar and not, but basically the, the beauty of hyper arc is using non copalinar fields. For brain and of course you can do that for brain only because for other parts of the body you cannot move the couch that much but yes that's actually so actually that's something that we are in, implementing in our hyper art technique in our clinic because this is we all we, we created our own vmat technique with linux but now we're going through the hyper arc training and all that but yes wonderful thanks and yes please take your time we're all okay. very excited perfect so for that what are the most important things Small PTVs, as because it's SVRT, the doses can go from 1,000 to 1,800 in three fractions for the 18 and five fractions for the 1,000. The critical structures here is, of course, I mean, the lungs is one of the main because the lesions are in the lungs, but I would say the core is more critical because the core, we have very, very specific limitation if the lesion is close to the core. And of course, the esophagus, chest wall, and heart, you need to basically make sure that you constrain the structure. But as always in SBRT, there is, there are, that's what is very good if you go to the high-tech report because there is published data for most of the clinical sites. And you will see that they, there is a, a nice article about lungs and they tell you a lot of things on lung toxicities and all that to, to get the constraint. Of course, in order to reduce toxicity, what we do, we reduce the margin. You can see here how the PTV is in orange, the CTV is in green, the ITV is in magenta, and the GTV is in cyan. So you can see that margins are between two to five millimeters maximum between all the TVs. And the ITV is something that I want to mention here. What is the most important, or what is the most problematic thing in, in lung? The movement of, you know, movement, the breathing cycle that, that we cannot do. We all breathe, patients breathe. So we need to take into account that either you do a 4 DCT simulation for the for which you create an ITV with ITV basically is basically you use the faces and the, you contour an ITV that you that your, make sure that your GTV encompass that breathing movement. And then you create a CTV and PTV on that. Or you can use techniques, breathing motion control technique, like the IBH, gating, that we use a lot of the IBH. And of course, there should be some image guided on, in order to control. So this one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go quickly, but again, this is basically telling you that we prescribe to lower isodoses. And you can, there are multiple things you can do linac based, but you can also people use cybernized tomotherapy, as we explained in the previous talk. So because I want to go more to the beam arrangement, again, this is nothing to do with brain. This is very simple, well, not very simple, but the more beams you use, for example, IMRT, you use very, you spread the fields space by, you know, 30 degrees apart between seven to nine fields. Or if you use, use, use arcs, you use like two, normally two half arcs. And the most important thing here, you want to stay in the side, in the side of the where the lesion is, in the ipsilateral side. So you don't want to put an arc on the right side here because you're going to go through the whole patient body on the other lung. So you normally same with the, the PT uh, with the IMRT arrangement. So you stay in the size of your tumors. The templates for optimization, again, here I'm giving you an example of the lung SVRT3 fractions with 1800 times three. So here is the starting points. As you can see, I wanted to point out how many, so depending of the type of constraint, which some of like, for example, for chest wall, for liver, you have volumetric constraint. We put a couple of uppers just to give the shape of the lines, or you can, you can use the line type of constraint. And then for the core, for example, that is a maximum dose, which is given upper. That's it. Okay. And that is like, okay, we don't want the, the dose 0% of the volume should be no more than 1%. Okay. That's, I don't want more volume getting more. So again, these are a starting point. 
for the optimization. Here you're going to have the start points that we use for if you use NTO. I'm talking about the, the, the targets, normally the priorities you use between 100 and 150 or whatever your treatment planning use for targets. And then the most important thing is that for ORs, you, you do 50% of the targets of the lower objectives. And again, you can use NTO and you can see, see the difference here that, that from the brain, that the distance from target to border now is 0.6 centimeter because you know that here, yes, we want sharp doses, but actually you also want conformality and you don't want the, you will see that the maximum PTB doses, we don't go to 150% here for lung. We go to 120 even or 125. So it's not like a free fall. So that's why you start a little lower to control the dose on the rest of the, beyond the PTB. Or you can use the rinds, you can use a small rind, like a, like a five millimeter rind around the PTV. but see you leave a little margin between the PTV and the beginning of the rind. Just to, because you're not here, there is a lot of issues with, the, there is a lot of air. So we know what happened when there's air and tissue on the treatment plan system. So you wanna control the lower isodoses, like, you give a priority, you know, like those between 80 and 85, and then you give much lower to the bigger rind, which is the, the cyan, which is the rind around the yellow, and you control the smaller isodoses, the lower isodoses. So for PTV cover, see the V max that we are expecting here, yes, it's normally more than a convention, but we don't want an SRS D max of 150. So we normally try to keep it below 115% because we can get good plans, very conformal, and meet all the constraints to the target with 100% isodose land. And here we're not very particular again, the 50% doesn't need to be the same as the target. It can go high, bigger, of course, the less the better, but you, we don't have that gradient index like we used to have for the brain because in the brain, you, the patient can come back or have necrosis and all that. And then we want the PTBD 95 is more than 100% of it. That's what we use. They are normally very conformal plants, but also check the lower isotopes. See how the 50, 30, and 10% opens up. So you want 10% as low as possible going to the other side of the body. These are, again, these are the criteria that we're using. I'm not going to go, but you can see how, for example, see for the core, you we have different limits and guidelines depending on the fractionation, three, four, or five fractions. And then I'm giving you here for all the critical structures. The example that I'm showing here is a right lung, 1800 times three, two beam at arts. So if we play that, see how here, how you can see how the lips move. You can use, this is also using jaw tracking. So basically the jaw also moves that actually reduces the periphery, the outside the dose. But if you don't have that feature, you don't need to use it. And I can show you, see how good the dose is. Look, the 5400, which is a prescription one, is very encompassed the PTV very well. 5900 is the D max, which is like less than 115. 50% looks very nice, see, but of course, see, there is a little bit more opening here, but that's normal. And then 30% and 10%, they look nice. And we met all the criteria. This is, you know, the PTV met and all the criteria for the core, the the heart for this particular fractionation, 1,803, okay? So moving to prostate, sorry that I'm going quick, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you are getting, just to give you the main concepts. Remember, we talk a lot about, we talk about the, pro, the spacer that we put between the prostate and the rectum here. I didn't give you, that's what I put this picture here. I didn't put this picture in the previous talk. So, but I think it's, it's very cool to see how, the prostate is square cartoon, how the prostate and the rectum looks with, with the spacer and without the space for R. And it's a material that is biocompatible. It maintains the shape for three months and absorbs in six, six months. It's just to give you an example and how it looks on, this is an MR, how it looks in the MR, because there are some, or some that are very busy in MR, but now there is one that is very busy in CT too. So you don't need to do an MR. But see how well you can see, and you can see how the rectum now it has been separated from the prostate basically. And that's a good thing because you are gonna be, your planning is gonna be much easier. In terms of prescription dose, I, we have a couple of things for SBRT, prostate 
800 times five is the one that we normally use. We started with 750 times five, but this protocol is closed already because we escalated to 800. But if it's a case that is receiving BRACI, we will treat them not to 800 times five, to 500 times five. And if we're treating prostate with nodes, we use those paintings 800 to the prostate and 500 times five to the nodes. Again, this is depending on what you do in your clinic. Here is, I wanted to include this because remember we talked about margins in the previous talk, but this is specific margins that we use. For example, if it's a prostate going to 4,000 in five fractions, normally we leave three millimeters around between C, this is a margin between CTV and PTV. But sometimes if let's say for whatever reason, if the, the spacer is, it wasn't that good or there is a problem that the, rec, the rectum, it was not very, you know, there was a little uncertainty or there is no fiducial markers or something. So we put five millimeters around except three millimeter by the rectum. So again, that's depending on what happened, but we have abandoned. That's something that we used to do. Now we're doing three millimeter for all of them. And these are the margins that we use if it's post bracky and with nodes and so on. So a beam arrangement for prostate, again, you can use IMRT fields. We normally use 15 MB energy. Some people use six, some people use 10, it's fine as well. We, we use between seven to nine fields IMRT, and this is the angles. They're very spread fields depending the seven to nine, depending how the rectum and, and prostate, how close they are to each other, you might need more field. And if it's a VMAT, we just use two full arts with, you know, of course, zero gantry. And then the, op the optimization objectives is, this is an example for the 805. Again, I wanna illustrate this is starting point. For example, the rectum, that is a structure that we have more than the DMAX. We have volumetric constraint to the 47 grave, to you not know, to different levels of, of those. So we might use more uppers in order to shape the line. For example, for and the priorities, again, this is, an, this is the, the starting for, for the NTO for prostate, but again, you can tweak things. The most important thing, we use the same as the plan, targets 100 to 150, and the OR is 50% of the lower objectives. And this is the prostate guidelines for the PTV coverage for the prostate 800 times five. See, we wanted a maximum dose of less, remember it's for 4,000, so 42.8, max up to 44, which is 110%, which is very, normally you, is less than 110. The mean dose, we want a good mean dose, a minimum dose, not less than 37.5 and so on. And these are the normal tissue criteria that we use. Again, these are our constraints with many experience using the space OR and using the fiducial marker. So this is what we use. The most important thing here is how to visualize the plan, the 50% the, the isodose land in the rectal area, because we wanted to make sure that the 50% isolate that's don't, in, don't transect or don't encompass the, the rectum too much. In the example on the left, this is what we call, this is a, a bad example of a 50% C because most of the rectum is getting 50% all, even a lot of 70%. You try to, I, you know, you, and you might meet the constraint, but it's better if, if you see this, the 50% encompassing, you know, transacting like 50%, let, we always say 50% of the rectum. So this is a good example of how to evaluate the 50% either loss in the rectum for a prostate case. Again, that's something that we develop because our physicians like to see that maybe because they saw some complications and there was some things and we were, you're able to get a very good cover. See the cover is identical for both and you can you can achieve that. And if there is an spacer, this is for something that you don't have a spacer, but if you have an spacer, we even like to see the 30%. This is a very, very good plan because why now you have a space between the rectum and the 50, why come with the 50? So we go with the lower isodose and so And the normal, some rule of thumb that we have is the distance between the 100% and the 50% is always less than a CM. And the 30% also does this, yeah. 
Sorry. One question. Bilal is asking, what energy do you use for your prostate cases? 15, 15 MB. Except it's 15 MB because with 15 MB, you, you achieve more conformality. It's more conformal and not to your, because your hotspots get reduced than six. But if a patient has a pacemaker, we use six MB because you know that pacemakers, you know, one neutron dose that is created by 15. That's what is the argument that a lot of people don't use 15 because of the neutrons but we have used 15 forever and a lot of people use 10 MB if you have that in your machine. So to be honest, you can use six, 10 or 15. We use 15. Sure. Thanks. And Soho is asking, is it mandatory to use fiducial markers for the prostate? It is actually when you go to 805, you do need to use fiducials because you need to track also, remember the margins are very small, and you make to make sure that the prostate is in that position all the time. And remember that you need to check the the, 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 the rectum might not be filled the same way as a simulation. The bladder, although we follow protocol with full bladder, but it might have a little. So that might vary the shape of prostate. And we use the fiducia to track the movement of the prostate during treatment. If you do not use fiducial, then you cannot use three millimeter margins for the CTV to PTV. You need to go to five millimeters for sure, even around the rectum. So that's, yeah. you could, but then the margins are bigger and then you're gonna have more problems to meet the constraint for rectum. Yeah. And other questions, even when you're using 15 MV, do you do arcs? Yes, we use arcs, yep. Okay, yep. thank you. Full arcs. Mm -hmm. Then, yes, we went through that. And then this is an example. Again, the, it's an 805, it's a prostate by seminal vesicle. So you can see how you can see we're using jaw tracking as well here. So you can see how the jaw closes if there is no open lips. And these are the two fields, basically, the two arts. One is counterclockwise and counterclockwise. And then remember here, we and we talk about, we use the collimator one with zero, one with 90. We like to do that. But a lot of people use 45 and 315 or 30 and 330, whatever. The only thing when you use this, remember that you have the extra dose on the corners. Again, something that you need to think about. And this is the dose distribution. You can see how well the 100% covers. I, you can see the spacer here that is protecting the rectums. And you can see how the 50 and 30% are very nice. They're not covering too much of the rectum. And something important here that we, I didn't mention is the urethra. The urethra is, a, is something that we, we basically, we don't put follies because we have developed this MR. Remember, we use MR for planning, MR compatible, basically, we, for planning, MR planning. And we developed this sagittal view of the MR sequence that give us a very well visual of the, of the urethra. And that's what we use for contouring. But if you don't have that, you can put a catheter, a folly catheter and control that. Of course, it's going to be bigger the margin, but you need to protect because the maximum dose to the urethra is almost the percent. Like, see, for example, the urethra, the D-max is 42 which is a little higher, 4,000 is the prescription. So you really need to make sure that you don't have hot spots there. Okay. And you can see here how everything met because everything is green. So everything was with the goal, less than the goal. And actually this is the new version. <laughs> you see, you have three columns before I show you the goals and the limit. Now we have done three columns. One is the planner goal. If you can get low, this is a wish, let's say. If you can do it, the, go the column two is the goal that we have before and the uh, level three is the limit okay so but this is again this is our way to do and finally we're going to move to paraspinal important concept here what are the most important ors for the paraspinal core and cora that's it it's not that we don't care everything else the esophagus is there too but the core and the cora you can do a lot of damage if you damage, if you prescribe, if you the, the maximum dose are exceeded for core and cora. So the core and core definition, they're very important. You can use two techniques. If you use myelogram, which is this diagnostic test that use a dye and that is injected, it's a contra dye that is injected, and you can see, you can see in the pictures on the top how well the cora, the, the, the true core is visualized here. So we use, we contour that and we evaluate that, not the whole canal, okay? Because we have constraint for that. If you cannot do that, then you have to use 
the whole canal and, canal and meet the constraint there. There is no other way. But you can also use an MRI and then you can fuse them with the CT because you can see in the in the MRI T2, you can see the, also the, 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 the true core very, very well. So you can define that. But because the MRIs require a fusion and there are uncertainties, instead of use, we contour, the physicians contour the true core, but for evaluation, we use a core PRV, which we are at one millimeter margin just because in uncertainties in fusion, in registration, just to be safe. Sorry, that's yes, here. The prescriptions dose, we do single fractions going to 2400 centigrade and one. That's for single, when it's a single vertebral body, when it's more than one vertebral body, the physicians would normally go to 1003 or 900 times three, 800, 800 times five, 600 times five. The lower is because if there is previous treatment in the same area, so you need to go a little lower because of the ORs, they received those before. Then one something also that I wanna to mention to, remember the core and cora, they're most, the most important organs to be very well contoured, but very important for paraspinal cases is to, if the patient received previous treatment, whatever it is in the area of whatever you're treating now, and the core or cora specifically, of course, the other organs too, you review everything, but those two re have received those, you need to do a review because now you're more limited of how much dose you can give to the core if the patient received previous treatment. You can see here, uh, in this is our constraint for spinal core. We have two columns, one with no previous radiation. For example, for a case going of, let's say 1,000 times, sorry, let's say 900 times three, let's say the first, the three fraction. So the max core, those, the limit is 26, 26 grade, which is less than 27. But if the patient received previous radiation, and here's the explanation of the previous radiation, and you need to do the analysis and all that, how much the core should have received, if it was conventional, if it was SVRT, the limit is not 26 anymore, it's 14.5, because it did receive. So, and this is all equivalent dose calculation, EQD2, and equivalent to two grades. So, again, there is a lot of in the literature, that's what before following this, you need to read the literature and then you can that you can find in the high tech for sure. So that but the main point that I want to make sure here, just be careful when the patients come back for a paraspinal case, if the patient receives treatment in the air in the same area now that you have if the, re, the patient receives treatment on the foot and now it's coming for T5, there is no problem. But if there is the same area, so the analysis is very important. In terms of beam arrangement, the plan, the MRT planning, normally, again, you distribute fields. And normally, if it's, a, if it's an upper, like a C-spine, we will use uh, like, um, like seven, seven posterior fields and then two anterior fields, just to because, you know, it's very, the, the neck is very small and we use 6 and B. But if it's, if it's a lower spine, like a, um, lower T or L spine, they, you don't want to come with anterior fields because you can go through the whole body. So we use like nine equally spread fields posterior, and we fi we found the 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 plan, the you know, homogeneity and the conformality is amazing. What you get, the only thing that you need to just make sure that you avoid the arms if they are on the way or the immobilization device. That's what is very important, how you mo immobilize this patient. For example, if it's something T or L, normally we ask the patients to put the arms on top because then you have a more range of aperture to go with that. If it's the neck area, of course, the arms, you don't want the arms here. <laughs> you want the arms down, of course, because it doesn't matter because it's the neck area. So you need to be careful how you do that, but then you avoid it. Same thing with the VMAT, which is we use a lot of VMAT, but well, we use both. Normally, we will use four arcs. And why four arcs? Because we need two arcs on this side and two arcs on this side. And the, you, know, you know that the, the gantry doesn't go this way. It goes only from the top around. Okay, So two, two uh, partial arcs. And on each side, with the, with the collimator 090, 090, clockwise, counterclockwise, and these are the suggestions. And again, very important here, you make sure that you avoid the, the shoulders or the arms. 
with this you can you can you can do avoidance sectors now if you use BMAS, you have another other tools but you know you you can use your imagination then objectives the objective template for optimization again these are suggesting starting point for example this is svrt 900 times three as you can see it's not that we ignore i mean i'm sure you need to put it but it's always good to put to start with the core coda and the ptd see what happened and then start because those are the ones that are going to drive your plan crazy let's say then start incorporating the esophagus the kidneys if they are around, then you start with that. Of course, you need to limit though because we have constraint and you need to respect them. But as a starting point, create a plan because if you get a good plan with this, then as much as you put the other one, you're not going to ruin anything. But then if you put everything together, you don't know if it's going to be, is it, if it's the software or if it's the core that is causing the problem. And then that's what is, is probably going to be the core, <laughs> but that's what it start with the core and coda if there is color in the area that you're treating, and the PTV, and then put the rest, okay? And then, of course, see, you can put more control, the esophagus, bowel, whatever it is. The priority is that, yeah. Sorry, there, there's a question. Why is asking when to choose IMRT versus VMAT, and can we go um, for both and then compare? How do you go about can, it? You know, for, we think for us, the evolution, we started with IMRT, and then we went to VMAT, but now we have come back to IMRT because we developed this auto plan for a, this internal script that it will do the plan for you and it only uses IMRT. We cannot do it with VMAT. So to be honest, it's exactly the same. The only thing that you need to, there are a few things to think about IMRT and, and VMAT that applies for everything. IMRT, they are fixed fields. So you know that certain areas, they are not gonna get any of those. You know what I mean? So, but then the, the isodosis, they're going to be a little more striking, the lower isodosis. VMAT, because you have a continuous dose. So now everything gets some dose, but then your isodoses are going to be more circumferential. That's the only difference, but it doesn't do any, in terms, also, I mean, with VMAT, we found that that's how we went to VMAT from IMRT because it was easy to make the concave isodose around the core and coda. It, it, it used to look prettier because with IMRT, sometimes we have pointed 100% around or like the hotspots were there. So it was easy to control them with VMAT. But now that we came back to IMRT with more fields, nine fields, because we used to use seven before, it's the same as VMAT. So, the answer is whatever you like. I advise always to start with IMRT so you understand what you're doing because, and then go to VMAT, but it doesn't, yeah, doesn't make any difference. So in terms of optimization, again, like I always said, targets 150 to 200 here and 50% normally of the, of the load. The only thing here, most of the time for the core and coda, the priorities, probably they're going to be much higher because remember those are very very important structures so here you have the ptv coverage garden from our institution and you can see how it's for a single fraction or for three fractions or for five fractions we have constraint for ptv for ctvs and gtvs and but you can see how you know it depends what you have and again this is also yeah if you don't have previous treatment if you have Previous treatment, that's a different, the, the covers get ruined a little bit. Normally, some another tip for paraspinal, uh, once the plan is satisfied, when you get a good plan, make sure, and that applies for all the other sites too, but for particular for paraspinal, make sure you inspect the VV, the jaw setting VV, because you want to close jaws if non used leaves are parked inside the jaw. Why here is, I mean, it's important, we said for lung, for the other, but here is extremely important because we're looking, we have the core around. Again, I don't want to make it, <laughs> but if there is a limb that is giving those to a particular part and it just happened that it's so close to the core and the patient move a little bit, you don't want that. I mean, it's, so you want to make sure that you control that. And we also use the concept of the duty cycle for VMAP plans for paraspinal, again, this is with experience, we come out with this number, which is the total, the duty cycle is the total immune, is how effective your delivery is basically gonna be. The total immune divided the dose per fraction. 
and that gives you a number. We said we found that when the total emit because if you constrain so much because we constrain the doors uh, the core so much the emus are going to be higher than other type of plants that you do very high, but if they are too high compared to the dose per fraction, then the deliver is going to be the machine is I mean it's going to be deliverable, but it's it's going to work for it. So basically, we found that the ideal relationship between the total emus and the dose per fraction is less than three, and it's acceptable less than four. But again, this is if the patient received previous treatment that were constraining the core even more and the other structure, sometimes you go to the cycles of six and seven and it's okay. And you know that it's gonna be deliverable, but it's just something to keep in mind, something that it makes life easy for the delivery, the machine, the patient specific dosimetry and all that. This is gonna be a long list. I'm not gonna go through everything. <laughs> These are our constraints for single fractions, paraspinals, all the structure, guidelines and limit. And this is the constraint for hypofractionated, the guideline and limit. And you can see how we have two columns, the no previous treatment and previous treatment. That's what here is very important to have that. See, you have for, not for everything we have constraint for prior, previous treatment. But remember, this is still a lot of study cases and we don't know much about SPRT with previous treatment in many structures, but for the most important, we do. And then here, this is a lot. And then we have the example. This is a 900 times three. Then we my remesis, so this is a nine fields we mat, equal spaces. You can see how, of course, the 100% because we're constraining the core so much, but you can see how nicely you can concave the isodosis in order to meet the constraint for the core. And see here, you see the studies. You see the D max of the core with no previous treatment is between 25, limit 26, and we get 2244, which is very good. There is something in orange, this, this DO35, less than 18 is more, but it's a guideline. So most probably we talk to the physician and he said, yeah, that's okay, that's fine. Also the PTVV100 is a little low because maybe the shape of the PTV, maybe the, the core is very close to the PTV. So, but again, if it's red, we pay attention. Orange, we talk again. Uh, there is another uh, constraint for the core that we follow, and that is that this constraint came from basically for a, a conventional APPA treatment to the core, how much the whole core can get. So we also like to see what is the transecting dose to the spinal core, and we have limits, uh, well, guidelines. For the, for the three fraction cases, which is this case, the limit is 18 gray. So what we do is I wanna make sure that 18 gray doesn't cover, you put a cloud of 18 gray, doesn't cover it my whole court because that's too much. That's come from also from paper and publication. So in this case, you can see how the core it is covering, 18 is covering, but not the whole core. So there is basically like we call a hole of 18 gray around the core. Okay, so that's something very important that we check on the paraspinal. And this for last, this is an example of a 2400 times one. Again, we use nine fields. The dose distribution, you can see how, be, I don't want to say beautiful, but how nicely concave the 100% goes around the core. Of course, it's going to be missing target there. The PTV is very close, but you can see how nicely the core is being spared. This is a T12, yes, T12 case. And we meet everything. The D max, see, this is a perfect example. The D max, we when the maximum dose is the goal is 12 and the limit is 14. The, the what we got is 1225. So it, it exceeded the goal. But remember, the goal is something that, yeah, we can exceed with a conversation with the physician because maybe the physician was looking, no, if we go to, if we go less than 12 or 12, maybe my minimum dose is going to be bad because look, they were bored, some things were borderline up here. So this is a compromise, scale, but we don't wanna see a red, that's for sure. Or if there is a red, there should be a big note here that there was a peer review and it's okay for this clinical reason, that's it. And this is the transecting core, uh, the transecting dose for the spinal core for the paraspinal single fraction is 10 gray. So I want, you put the cloud and you can see how the core is, Basically, there is a hole of 10 gray on the 10 gray cloud. And you can see that the whole core is not getting through it. Less doses getting. Okay. So 
finally, we came to the conclusion. <laughs> this took a long time, but I, I hope it's enjoyable. I hope, uh, you know, there is a lot of talk, but I didn't want to give you guys, because there is a lot, we can talk about general those plan evaluation and optimization and for SVRT, but you can see how different they can be or how specific things you need to pay attention for each specific site. So I thought it was very important to go through these cases and, and give the general two. So basically, as a conclusion, we have gone through evaluation criteria, check out the high tech, check out RTOG protocols institutional evaluation, but carefully review and approve before you implement. And in terms of optimization and plan evaluation, the importance for each side, there is something important. Small field challenges for brain, breathing motion for lung, prostate, the isodose intersecting the rectum, that's a good uh, something that we really look, plus the other things we talk, paraspinal, core and core definition, and previous treatment review, very important things. And I think for last, these are the, this is the reference. This is where you're going to find the high tech contact. And this particular, the number five is that nice high tech uh, summary with the tables.